Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking into our latest TDR Trade to Black podcast. We reported a couple weeks ago that the first 25 or six days in the state of Ohio regarding adult use reported around $44 million. Massive numbers, to say the least, within the first month of business. And it's supposed to get busier, busier as MSO Merrimed actually got approval last week, commenced adult use sales, which is why we want to have our next podcast as we bring in CEO John Levine back to the podcast. Happy to see you. And great news, obviously, last week pertaining to adult use sales that you guys will commence in the uh, state of Ohio. What a state this has been out of the gate, don't you think? Uh, we are so happy we finally got our approval there. We're really excited about this state. Our location is uh, situated in the northwest of the state, but it's in a great location, great store, and this is going to be a very exciting ride. But that's just the beginning because we get our second dispensary off the ground sometime in the next six to 12 months. That's encouraging to say the least. Well, I know you and I have discussed in the past, your background is corporate real estate and you understand location just about as good as anyone. But I do want to get into Ohio, but I first want to get just a quick update on a couple of things. Uh, let's first begin with Maryland, uh, where you began. Uh, Maryland, where you announced last month the opening of your second dispensary in the state uh, in the state called Thrive Wellness, which is in Upper Marlboro, which was on August 19th. So what can you tell us, I guess, based on the first 30 or 35 days as to how that location is performing. That location is actually uh, doing much better than we had originally thought. That location is not in the prime location, and we've been looking for some way to upgrade that to a new location. But in the meantime, we opened up at the existing facility, and it's been very exciting to watch the growth there as the uh, neighbors and everybody have found the location and are excited that they have opportunities to buy at a local uh, shop versus having to travel. So that state is really coming along yeah. great. What surprised you when you say like, it's kind of surprised us a little bit based on the location itself. Like what, what comes to mind? Uh, unfortunately it's in a, uh, a office park, which doesn't have any real signage or ability to put out uh, signs to tell people that we're there or entertainment and stuff. So it's been a very quiet launch and, uh, our, clientele has found us very well just by doing local media and social media. So we're very excited by the uh, impact that it's had on that one location. Well, let's face it, Maryland, it's been uh, an absolute rocket since it uh, launched back in July of 2023. Numbers actually sh uh, ballooned to $100 million in August uh, last month, which was reported. But, you know, your latest earnings, you had some strong wholesale numbers. I know this market was a big component to that. So like, what are you seeing? Is Are things remaining strong from what you're seeing so far with regards to wholesale in Maryland? Yeah, Maryland's a very exciting state. We're still seeing that growth that you're talking about. You know, our brands are still top in that state and continue to grow. Our brands of the Betty's Eddie's have always been a very strong leader there, but now we're even stronger. And then we have our Bubbies and Vibations and Nature's Heritage Flower is making a major comeback with our additional growth in the uh, expansion of the facility there. So we're looking at a great fourth and uh, first and second quarter of next year as we open up our uh, first cut this past uh, two weeks ago. And yep. we'll have that additional flower on hand in four weeks. It's promising to see how like, you know, Bubby's and uh, Betty's Eddie's, just as far as the product itself and the states that you're in. I know we talked about in the past about entering back into Illinois, and then you look at Maryland, but you got to be pretty excited with how consistent this product has been and how favorable and uh, really the interest level from consumers on how it's growing into multiple states. But um, do you hear a lot of that from various markets that you're in? Like it's the same message for whether you're in Illinois or Massachusetts or Maryland regarding some of the product that you have? Yeah, I mean, our products, I mean, the brands are really where the future is. And we're really concentrating on expanding our our brand and our brands into additional SKUs, but making them even better and bringing different options. I mean, we have our, our pumpkin spice and uh, new, uh, not new, but we have our one-time uh, Betty's coming out with the apple pie for the season holidays. Ooh. So those are always big ways that we can excite the consumers that really love our brands and our brands are being demanded in additional states. So we're out there working on expanding to additional states through either licensing partnerships 
or other opportunities such as new licenses. Was that a flavor that Tim and uh, Ryan came up with again, as far as like the seasonal, like, like that sounds tasty. That seasonal, uh, I believe has been the last two years that we brought it out and yeah. uh, we uh, launched that with um, when we had owned it with Marimed. So it wasn't one of the original flavors, but it's yeah. a very exciting flavor. And I know that a lot of people enjoy it. Uh, this this month, we're uh, launching our uh, support for uh, breast cancer. Okay. And uh, we have our uh, uh, Betty's Loves Boobies campaign out there. And, uh, it's, it's a, it's and that was approved by the CEO, right? <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely was. But I, I do, I mean, think that cancer patients uh, really yeah. find um, assistance in the Betty's Eddies and our other brands to help them while they're going through their chemo or other treatments. So exciting to yeah. be able to work with uh, all these people on uh, breast cancer awareness, which is a very important role. Well done. Well done. Uh, let's switch now to your backyard in the state of Massachusetts and uh, get an update on your Panacea Wellness Dispensary in Quincy, which opened back on July 2nd, if I'm correct. So what can you tell us about the location and how it's been performing so far? It's one of my favorite locations. It's, uh, this is a very difficult economy and uh, loyalty in New England has always been known that you have to win that loyalty. And yes. Getting somebody yes. to change over is always a challenge, but we're seeing continued growth in our Quincy facility and we do expect it to be one of the bright spots of uh, 2025 as more and more people hear and see what a beautiful store location, the selection and variety, the low prices to mid prices to top shelf. And we offer everything to the customer from convenience and a fun, safe place to buy their cannabis. And uh, all the golfers that are going to the golf course next door are starting to understand, hey, I can stop, grab my... Uh, my packages before I go golfing and then have a good time on the golf course. Yeah, of course. That's actually a great angle and great demo to great demographic to go after something like that. So I can understand the location. Look, you know, we, you know, you and I have discussed the past that market shares for some companies within the state of Massachusetts has actually decreased, but you have increased. You just brought up the idea of like, this is a market that wants loyalty. I've often looked at certain companies and it seems like, you know, when you're in your own backyard and that's where your head office is located, there's advantages to that. Would you say, just based on you being stationed, located within the backyard of Massachusetts, understanding the market, but then really understanding the audience? Because let's face it, I, I from even when I was in Boston, loyalty, yes, you get loyalty in other states, but I find it's even more enhanced within the, you know Massachusetts and within that actual market itself. But how would you get best categorize why you are increasing your market share a lot of some of those things that i've outlined may be a little bit true as to why you continue to build your market share in Ma massachusetts i'd say a lot of it is our management team i mean myself i came from the mass merchandisers industry many years ago in sporting goods and other in other uh, products but one thing i always learned early on was new england as a area is a very interesting area. I got asked one time in mass merchandising, how do all these big mass merchandisers survive yeah. in that one area? I mean, we had the most mass merchandisers, but it was loyalty of the customer. I believe that. People go to a place that they feel that there's a friendly environment, that they like the people that work there. Everything's local. And when you can design your, your stores to have that comfort level and that service, that the people of New England are expecting. That's what really wins the customers over. I don't think it's that we're a local company. I think it's more is that we've des we've designed and produced a type of service that people want to come to and get that, hey, welcome to uh, Cheers. And you, everybody you know knows yeah. your name. It's yeah. that, that type of environment. And it's not just here in Massachusetts we do this. We do this everywhere. And I think that's what's going to be the victory for us is is the customer service, the experience, the big menu, and the uh, pricing from entry level to top shelf that you can come in and have everything at one stop. It's yeah, exciting to be able to take that across the country. 
Well, let's face it, marketing, branding, uh, understanding what the lifestyle is. Um, what a great location though, Panacea, like you said, next to a golf course is some of the demographic that's available there. But yeah, it's just all part of really understanding like, you know, what do people enjoy when it complements their current lifestyle away from the day-to-day -day business? For that matter, it could be involved in business too. People are dealing with certain anxieties, whatever, but it's the overall education as to where this industry is going. And we've grown substantially. However, you know, still a long ways to go when you think about, you know, where we are currently are today. But, you know, I'm sure that you've been involved in this space for quite some time and where we are today versus even five years ago is night and day, right? Oh, my God. You can't even compare the two. Like when Bob and I, I first got into this industry, you know, we went to a uh, show in Vegas, one of the first shows. Bob and I show up in a shirt and tie. And people are walking around in tie dye shirt shorts and I know. flip flops. <clears throat> That's how much I, like, I think we're overdressed. <laughs> <laughs> you think? <laughs> and now today, people walk around in sport coats and shirts. I know. And they're, this was a real business, and people are, are giving us more respect as a real business, but it's still an industry that is fought with people not understanding what it means. Yeah especially Washington. I was there last week, but we won't get into that, uh, <laughs> quite the interviews, but yeah, it's just pointing this way and that way. And it's just like, just keep it simple and get something done because that's what would really take this industry to the next level. Because from a pure fundamental standpoint, it's there, but, uh, let's move now to the Midwest and the state of Illinois. We talked earlier about wholesale being a major component of the company's success. Uh, how would you best describe the new wholesale business ramping up in the Illinois? Our wholesale business there has been doing exceptionally well. We've uh, started to hit the uh, ground running with our Betty's Eddie's, but you know, Bubby's and Vibations and in-house took off very quickly, faster than we thought, and it's leveled out a little bit, but I think that's part of the economic factor of people not having a lot of extra money to spend. Our wholesale business is very strong there, and the most exciting yeah. news is that we're about to start our growth. So now our grow will have uh, our own flower in the market in uh, probably five months and uh, be able to get nature's heritage flower to another state and make everybody excited over the high quality and love that we have for our flower. Yeah, I think last numbers I looked, it was around 1.7 or 1.8 uh, billion that the state has generated in sales so far here in 2023. Like, do you describe, I guess, the foot traffic being relatively stable? Um, you know, that what you've experienced so far this year in the market? Yeah, we actually have been uh, watching the foot traffic and the, uh, we've seen that it has leveled out, come up a little bit. The one difference is they're not spending what they used to spend. People don't have those abilities to spend that extra dollar or $5 yes. and they're down to a dollar. So they're, they're being more cautious of how they spend. But I think that's the advantage of what we offer. You can come in, you can get all tiers of pricing with a very big selection. So we're, we're there for our consumer so that they know that they can come in and be able to splurge on what they can afford. And we, yeah. find, we're trying to find more programs for our loyalty to give them more benefits to come to us with some additional discounts. Yeah. Would you like to see any changes, any kind of changes made within the actual state framework as to like where it is right now? And like you said, you've kind of mentioned about, you know, there's only so much money to spend for a lot of these consumers right now, but is there anything that comes to mind that look, market is performing relatively strong and is growing. However, here's some things that I'd like to tweak. If so, like what would those be? Well, I guess everybody's dream would be to see lower taxes within the state. The state yeah. taxes are some of the highest, and they have states coming in all around them. Yeah, Illinois still has the big, biggest selection and variety to offer with most of the companies there being MSOs and others that yeah. have all different types of variety of products. But I think the biggest thing is as more states come on and the cost of taxes are much lower in those states. I think that's going to be a big challenge for the state of Illinois. Yeah, well said. Uh, I know it's been a few months too since your cultivation facility in uh, Mount Vernon. Um, it began, I think it was 10 months ago. Was it December that it launched uh, with your manufacturing processing in Mount Vernon? Just the manufacturing processing. Like I just said, we're about to launch our flower there and get that into the market. Our first flower will be going in in the next couple of weeks. Okay. And it will be about five months before we'll have our own nature's heritage on the shelf in Illinois. So 
we're very excited about our our grown flower there to coming to market soon. Nice. Well, well, we'll watch that closely. But you know, really, how I guess how important has that facility been for the wholesale business in in Illinois? I think it's been exciting. We we knew that it was going to do well. It's it just been incredible that we were able to take down some of the areas uh, and get into the uh, vape business there a lot quicker than we thought because that's a tough market. I mean, they have a lot of vapes, but our vape pens have been very successful. And we knew Betty's Eddie's would do great there, but it's been wonderful to watch the vibations and bubbies and yeah. in-house gummies take a uh, chunk of the market. And uh, we expect to be very competitive as we continue into 2025. Yeah, I can't help but think like, we all know the future like for this market to grow is not necessarily on the flower side, but when you talk about vapes and especially edibles, um, that's what's why I'm only going to make this industry grow substantially in the next few years and really start to like branch out and target uh, a specific demographic. But when you look at a lot of your edibles brands in various states, what would you say is the core demographic? Is it kind of all over the place? It, brands are still as surprisingly i 10 years ago would have thought brands would have been more than 50 percent but flower still is well over 60 percent of the market still and it's very surprising with all the great brands that are out there in the edible section but we're very excited we're concentrating on our brands we think brands are really the future of this company and yeah. we're building on our brands within the skus that we have and we're going to add some exciting new uh, products in the uh, next coming months and into 2025. And I think that those products will help us expand to the needs and uh, what the consumer is asking for in different types of means of taking cannabis, whether it's discreet or through non-smoking ability. You know, our vibrations coming out with the sleep uh, product in that, I think has been a great add to yeah. a uh, drink mix and the drink mix is just the start. And we have some new exciting products that we'll be launching in the next uh, several weeks or months. And uh, I think everybody will be excited to see what we have. And we're going to build our brands to be leaders in every state. But we're listening to the consumer of what they're looking for so that we can bring them the right products. Yeah. Well, be interesting to see what's going to happen uh, as you start to expand within the uh, state of Ohio. And I know you got great news late last or early part of uh, last week that uh, adult use sales would commence. And I know full adult use actually is now in full swing. That happened around the first or second week of September, even after launching back on August 6th, the first official day. But $44 million that was reported in the month of August. A lot of people anticipating to see what kind of numbers we're going to see now that it's full adult use in uh in process and now uh, underway in Ohio, but this is potentially a $2 billion market. Uh, are you surprised at all with how well it's performed so far and really what this opportunity presents for you in Ohio? Yeah, I'm very surprised at how well this uh, first week has been going with uh, the uh, sales in Ohio, the restrictions of what the state put out there for being able to market and promote yes. the uh, product, the dispensaries is very, very restrictive. The fact that people are looking and finding that we're open for adult use is amazing. And the marketing is very, very difficult to stay within the guidelines and be uh, a, able to get people to pour into your location. But I think yeah. people are very excited to see that we are up and running. I think our store is exciting and uh, it will draw more and more people. As I said, it's all about customer service and loyalty. And we'll bring those people in and make them feel the, the warmth of New England, even in the Midwest. <laughs> there you go. Well, I drove around the state on the uh, first official day of um, uh, August 6th. I think the biggest thing that surprised me, John, was the fact that when you look at a state like Illinois, people knew six months in advance the actual first day of adult use going live. There was no run-up time for the state of Ohio, but... Uh, I do think there's probably a few more things to do in Illinois than there is in Ohio. But regardless, at the end of the day, I think, you know, there's a reason why a lot of companies have stationed themselves there. But um, what would you best describe like a great, like, you know, I guess, comparison when you say marketing restrictions in Ohio versus Illinois? Like what comes to mind to give our audiences kind of a better idea is the restrictions that are taking place in that state? 
the marketing promotions that you're able to do in Illinois with pop-ups and signage and uh, billboards and items outside your store to attract customers in. You can't do any of that in the state of Ohio, but I think people are taken to social media and understanding yeah. that they can go look and see online when the stores are going to be up and what they're carrying, when they're going to be adult use. And we've been doing a very good job working with the local community and community leaders to present why Marimed's there and what we're doing for the community. So it's all about community effort to work together to promote it. But Illinois was a much different market, but it gave us the ability to do a lot easier marketing and promotion of our dispensaries down south. But we did learn a lot about the community in the southern part of the uh, state of Illinois, and we're using that same logic in Ohio. But it's all about getting the customer, getting them to feel really happy to be there, giving them the options for a big variety and comfort, security, and loyalty. You've talked in the past, having a background in real estate. This is located in Tiffin, Ohio, which is in the northwest region of Ohio. Can you maybe explain a little more as to why this location made sense and what the whole area and surrounding area is all about? Well, Tiffin, Ohio is a uh, is actually a bigger area than most people think. They have okay. two colleges there. They have a great community that's with a supportive community. It, uh, it has a lot of farmland around it, but it does have a area of the city that is uh, a well, um, nice city and uh, the people are wonderful. I enjoy visiting there. It's maybe not the easiest place to get to, but when you get there, you can really feel the love and comfort of that area. When we picked this location, we picked it because of the size of the location, the standalone building with parking and accessibility heading in and out of the city. So for easy access to that location, it's not downtown, it's just outside. So it's yep. near the highways, but also near the downtown area. So square footage pricing wise in that specific market made sense for you to pick that location? Yes. The, 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 the market with cannabis is always difficult, but we did find a very uh, good landlord with some good pricing that fit the market perfectly. Yeah. Well, I look back and this gives you an idea. And I think a lot of people were concerned with the state of Michigan to see if they'd lose some of their market share once Ohio went live. And all they did in the month of August when Ohio did go live was report their biggest month ever, which is $294 million, close to $300 million, which is crazy. But Michigan back in 2019 in their first month when they went live, they reported just a little over $7 million. Fast forward, and this is where it is now. And this is why I'm thinking, wow, Ohio, 44 million in their first month. Where is this going to go? And you can understand why a lot of key multi-state operating companies like yourselves are basically stationed in Ohio. But as far as acquisition and expanding in Ohio, you see that's definitely in your cards in the future? Yeah, we've been looking at a lot of opportunities in Ohio. We're going to continue to yeah. look at those opportunities. You know, our goal is to expand in each of the states that we're in to the max we're looking at additional locations in Illinois. We're looking at opportunities in Ohio besides the one additional dispensary we already have yeah. coming. And then we're also looking in Missouri, where we uh, have been with our uh, processing center, which just is opening and will be on the market soon. It's just that it takes time. Some of these states are very slow on getting us the approvals to start, but we're patient and we... Uh, go right at it and make sure that we complete what we've started. So yeah. we will get fully uh, vertical in every state possible and expand our business. I spoke to uh, Senator Hawley out of Missouri actually last week about some of these hemp infused intoxicated products and some of the bans that they're putting on within that state, especially candy and edibles and stuff like that. So I'm sure that might've grabbed your attention a little bit, but uh, that's a totally different conversation to take place. But uh, interesting to see how this farm bill is going to get amended and how it's actually going to have hemp redefined. But uh, it's good to see some of the crackdown and regulation that's taking place in certain states, don't you think? Absolutely. Very much needed because it's going to hurt the cannabis industry if they yeah. don't start regulating it in the proper fashion. Yeah. And yeah. people are jumping through loopholes to do things that aren't legal. I mean, Massachusetts has always been one of the most difficult and they don't allow you to do anything with hemp. I mean, people are still shipping it in direct from uh, outside the state, but uh, that's really it's not wild. legal within the state. It's wild. 
big tobacco. It took big alcohol to basically get into this industry to finally, you know, starting to open up a lot of people's eyes in Washington. But like I said, I was there last week and there's a lot of pointing fingers as to why things haven't progressed on either side. But uh, pointing um, fingers, that's what Washington does best. <laughs> uh, hey, honestly, John, when you hear that and then actually go there and get a front row seat and see how it's done, it, it, your jaw drops. But whatever that's another uh, conversation but before i let you go a quick update on delaware i know their governor carney actually expedited a bill back in july to basically fast track adult use any update as to what you're hearing from there uh we're hearing that they're going to start issuing some cultivation license in the next couple months and then okay. uh, processing licenses uh we hear that the dispensaries are targeted for the end of the first quarter uh of next year so it's going to be exciting to watch those uh, retail stores come online in 2025 and the ability to uh, expand into that market even bigger than we already are. You got to be happy with some of the growth that you've done when, you know, when we point out some of the things here today, but you know, when you look at things right now in the last eight, nine months, you talk about Illinois, Massachusetts, Maryland, and Ohio. Those are four really key states as far as growth. When you look at a lot of these tier two and tier three companies within the space, but um yeah i'm sure you're probably excited just to see what 2025 can present i know you're not in florida but i think amendment three would definitely garner a lot of attention for the overall industry if adult use were to go live in florida but then segue rescheduling at some point in 2025 uh big steps hopefully incremental steps in the right direction for this space right yeah we're very excited about 2025 but we're not stopping i mean you talk about all the growth we're very excited about the future I mean, we're continuing to build our brands and we're going to expand it to be a leader in every possible yeah. market. And we're going to expand our brands into additional markets, whether it's through additional licenses or partnerships. So we're very excited about the future, concentrating on building our brands to be leaders throughout the country and then the world. And uh, as you said, Betty's Eddie's is a great product, but that's just one of the many brands that we have. Yeah. And yeah. they're all great and they're there for... Uh, giving the consumer what they are asking for. And we're looking forward to the future. Yeah. Can the same be said about your Patriots? <laughs> Maybe in the future. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're not the old Patriots, but we'll, we'll see them again up top. You guys have had enough. What was uh, it? Six, six titles. You're all right. We got more uh, coming. We're not done yeah. yet. What a, what a town to be in, in Boston, the Red Sox, the Celtics, the Patriots, the Bruins, like, honestly, I can't believe the 20 or 25 year run all your sports teams have had. What an incredible time to live in Boston. If you're a sports fan. Yeah. We're heading into the best season. Now we have the Celtics and Bruins coming back online. Yeah. Yeah. The series well, coming our way. Well, it's uh, not a bad place to live in. I will say that. And uh, being a Detroit fan, I'm very, very jealous. We had some good runs, but nothing like what you guys have had in the last 25 years. But regardless, I appreciate the update. Uh, great news, obviously, in Ohio. We'll be watching these numbers closely as they report their latest numbers in September. But uh, onwards and upwards, uh, not just in Ohio, but a lot of states. And uh, look forward to catching, uh, touching base and catching up with you in Chicago at the Benzinga Conference uh, next week. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you there. It's always great to see you live. You as well. <laughs> so I look forward to seeing you there. You as well. Thanks, John. Thank you, Shad. Take care. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching our latest podcast. What'd you all think? Is there any information that we're missing? Is there anything you want us to cover? As these industries heat up, we're getting access to more and more big hosts. So let us know the questions that you want us to ask for you. As usual, smash that like button. We want this to go viral. Click on that bell for all notifications for the latest interviews that we're doing. And as usual, let's build this community. Subscribe to our channel because we appreciate it. Because we wouldn't be here without you. Thanks for watching, everyone.